I'm Jo Wimple, travel enthusiast, wine and culinary explorer, and adventure seeker. Join me on this beautiful trek along the California Highway 1 Discovery Route as we journey down California's breathtaking Central Coast. It's 101 miles of fun where 10 destinations make for one fantastic vacation. So sit back and enjoy the ride. San Simeon may be a tiny town, but it's not short on delicious food and wine. Today, we're heading across the street from Hearst Castle to check out Hearst Ranch Burgers and the one and only Hearst Wine. Talk about a piece of real estate. This magnificent land has never been developed thanks to William Randolph Hearst and the Hearst family. These pristine rolling hills and this dramatic coastline appears just like it did hundreds of years ago. It's like a snapshot of history. Here at the oldest store building along the north coast of San Luis Obispo County. Built in 1852, Sebastian's General Store is a California registered historical landmark now owned by Hearst Castle. Sebastian's Store, state historical landmark, family owned since 1914, and the best burger you will ever have. Check it out. Once inside, you can belly up and do some Hearst wine tasting. Then grab a glass and sit down for a meal fit for a cowboy or cowgirl. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't even pick it up. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. Absolutely. The best burger I've ever had. Thank you, San Simeon. I'm full as a bull and ready to hit the road again, coasting the Central Coast. I'm with Carolyn Skinder. She is in charge of the Coastal Discovery Center right here in San Simeon. Carolyn, there is so much going on here. Please tell me what is happening. There's a lot going on and one of the most beautiful parts of the world that you can come to visit. So this center was created with California State Parks to educate our public about the land-sea connection. What is protected on land by the California State Parks, which is adjacent to what we protect at sea. Who I work for is the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, and that is basically your federal underwater park. <laughs> I love it. We've brought the underwater to you in some cases. We talk about everything from clean watersheds and the beautiful trout that inhabit those to protecting our marine mammals like this animal right here. And what is that? That's the skull <laughs> of a juvenile, not even an adult, elephant seal. Oh my gosh. And he's got really big teeth, which you can't see because the trunk is in the way. It's usually covering those teeth. So oh. the important part, especially during this season, is to stay back 100 feet from any elephant seal that you see to protect yourself and them and your children. Yes, they are not to be played with, right? Not to be played with. <laughs> well, how much do they weigh? They can get up to 5,000 pounds. Oh my gosh, okay. So yes, please stay away from the elephant seals. Just view them from a distance, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Absolutely. Good. And you have lots of programs here for education and so that the public can really learn, including a junior ranger program. We do. We're all about education and we're all about helping young people become stewards for the land and the ocean. So the Junior Ranger Guide program is one fantastic way to do that. They have to earn a badge by completing the book and going through certain stages. And they can collect different badges from different state parks. And that is a program we very much promote. When we are, we have school groups, we have public groups, we have Saturday lectures. Mm -hmm. And when we're closed, there's a lot of beautiful signage. There's a mural out front where people can get to know about the species under the water right, right here at San Simeon Bay. And there's an app 
that goes with that, right? If you want to go tide pooling, there is a tide pool app put out by the National Marine Sanctuary and Octos. It's a collaboration again. There's a whale app, and if you get onto the National Marine Sanctuary site and the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary site, there's 14 of us throughout the country, then you can find various educational materials and apps to help you learn more about our incredible ocean. I love that. So if you would like to go tide pooling or if you would like to bring your junior ranger here or if you are just wanting to be a better steward to this land that we all live on under sea and above, then come check out the Coastal Discovery Center. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming. Today we have the incredible honor to be at Hearst Castle. This 165 room castle is just part of the 80,000 acres that is Hearst Ranch in San Simeon, California. I'm joined today by author, historian, Victoria Kastner, who has been with the castle since 1979. We're in front of Casa del Sol, the House of the Sun. Victoria, thank you so much for having us here. It's my pleasure. So this is the 150 year anniversary of the acquisition of this land by the Hearst family. And everything really is very similar to what it once was. And that is a commitment that the Hearst family has made to this property, right? When the, all of the other cities of coastal California grew and developed and turned into uh, metropolises, this place did not. Right. It remained what it always has been. Right. If W.R. Hearst came back today, it would be just as he left it. He would he would recognize it, and so would <laughs> Julia Morgan. That's right. <laughs> Julia Morgan. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. If you would like to learn more from Victoria, you can download the app that she wrote directed, narrated, created, and you can get it on iTunes or Google Play. And Victoria, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. We're here in the Doge sitting room. I'm with Tracy McConnell, who is the project coordinator with the Friends of Hearst Castle. That's the nonprofit organization that helps to support the castle here. Thank you, Tracy, for having us. Well, thank you for having me. So you do education, you do preservation, and this is no small feat to maintain 25,000 artifacts, or at least have I, it on your drawing board, right? I have heard that the bill for what needs to be restored is 60 million. Wow, 60 million. You have a lot of different events throughout the year and fundraising opportunities. Tell us about some of those. Yeah, we raise funds for, for the, those art projects. We also raise funds so that we can bring local youth up here. In doing that, we will have membership where anyone can join. We have special events that anyone can buy tickets to. We have five big special events this year. Our most popular is Twilight on the Terrace, and that will be June 6th. Nice. And it's a fun event where the whole community is involved. You get to come up and taste beer and wine and food from all over the county. Right. And so if you would like to become a friend of Hearst Castle, you can do so by going to the website, friendsofhearstcastle.org, and just become a member. Thank you, Tracy. Yes, be a friend. Beach, right here in beautiful Cambria. One mile of pristine boardwalk that leads you right along the ocean front to this magical place. Look at that, absolutely spectacular. Paul Whip, wine purveyor at El Calibri Wine Bar on Moonstone Beach in Cambria. And Paul, I've been hearing an awful lot about these Saturday events that you have. Yeah, um, every Saturday night from six o'clock till nine o'clock, we have um, a musician come in and play some live music. And we also have a winery come in, bring three different wines, introduce them to our staff and to the guests that are staying with us. And that's how we introduce the wine to the wine bar. Oh, absolutely. And so you actually are handpicking all of your wine then, is that right? Yeah, just drive out to the vineyard. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. And this space is just magnificent. I love it here. And it's also very cozy. Feels like I'm at home. What do you attribute that to? Well, we have a really small staff. So 
it's kind of my second family. Um, this is where we come to work, but also where we live and where we play. <laughs> and I would like to play here too. It's a lot of fun. So thank you for having us. And this is El Calibri Wine Bar. You gotta check it out. Heading down the road to enjoy my wine on the Fiscalini Ranch. This 400 foot ridge boasts a dramatic ocean bluff that runs more than a mile along the shoreline. I love walking on the boardwalk or kicking back on one of the benches and enjoying nature's own reality show. There's so much to see on the ranch, even breathtaking views of migrating whales. This preserve didn't happen on its own. Like so many other majestic coastlines, it could have been developed. But thanks to the efforts of what is now Friends of the Fiscalini Ranch Preserve, it belongs to all of us forever. The ranch is open daily to the public, but remember, there's still work to do. You can contribute and join Friends of the Fiscalini Ranch Preserve and help enhance and protect this 437-acre jewel. Truly a sight to behold. I'm here with Maria Stola Benetti, General Manager of Stola Family Vineyards right in Cambria. This is a very special property, Maria. Tell me about it. Sure. We are the only vineyard and winery here in Cambria. We're also one of the closest vineyards to the coast in California. That gives us the magnificent opportunity to create cool climate wines, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Syrah from such a unique location. We um, are also family-owned, boutique, and uh, pretty teeny tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and so also, you're part of the stewardship travel on the coast here, right? We partner with the Cayucas Abalone Farm, and we invite the guests out to our winery here and teach them all about what it's like to grow along the coast. And it is magnificent. <laughs> so thank you for having us. It is absolutely a pleasure. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. For nearly 30 years, Robin's Restaurant has been serving globally handcrafted cuisine right here in Cambria. Set in this beautiful historic adobe on Burton Drive, this charming restaurant actually got its roots when owners Robin and Shani Covey first began serving their locally farmed fare in the back room of a small health food store in Cambria. Word got out about their invented menu, and the rest is history. Known for its international cuisine, this is just a small sampling of what they offer. It's not just the food that makes Robin special. The atmosphere is perfect. Look around. There's plenty of room for large parties or just cozy up by the fire for a romantic dinner. Robin's in Cambria, a very special place not to be missed. Here we are in the beautiful village of Cambria. This town is absolutely overflowing with galleries of all types, from wind chimes to sculptures, blown glass, fine art, wood carvings. Cambria is absolutely an artist haven. All right, so I'm here today with Robert and Kathy Unger, owners of Moonstone Gallery. And tell me a little bit about, how did you guys get here? In 1981, we finally decided to escape Los Angeles. <laughs> right. <laughs> and move to Cambria. We wanted to specialize in American craft, you know, the, the finest craftsmen from all over the United States. That's fantastic. Tell me about your Moonstones. What well, do we have here? You were you were curious about um, the Moonstones, why yeah. we call it Moonstones. Right. There's it's actually a white um, chalcedony or agate. Gem quality moonstones are found in the United States, but the really good supply of them comes from Sri Lanka and India, and that's where most of these come from. So that's really interesting, but right here in this little tiny town on our little tiny moonstone beach. Yeah. It's a stone for lovers. It's a, a stone that gives you insight into the future. Oh my gosh. Uh, all kinds of mystical Lovers things. looking into the future, loving Cambria. Yeah. It's a good place to be. Thank it you is. for being with oh, us. Thank you. Yes. This is Harmony. Population 18. You will not believe the magic of this place. It's full of winemaking and glass blowing, but with a blink of an eye, you pass right by. So don't miss it. Ah, Cayucas. Population 3000 and last of the small California beach towns. Cayucas, Chumash for kayak or canoe, gets its name from Captain James Cass, who settled on this beautiful gem in 1867. Captain Cass recognized the excellent opportunity of the area as a shipping port. He and his partner, Captain Ingalls, built the pier, a store, and a warehouse known as Cass's Landing. Their efforts paid off, and the pier became the commercial hub of the North Coast. Flash forward nearly 150 years, 
and the town remains much the same. No high-rise hotels, not even a stoplight. Just the pier, now under restoration, the warehouse, now a small event center, and a cozy beach town, perfect for a getaway, with plenty of local places to stay, play, and eat. Cayucas is not only the coolest small town in America, it's an authentic blast from the past. I'm here today with Jim Rudell from Rudell's Smokehouse, right here in beautiful Cayucas. Jim, tell me what is the secret behind your amazing fish tacos? This place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just this spot is really magical. It is. Well, I personally smoke the fish and we wrap it in a nice flour tortilla. One of the secrets of my tacos is Fuji apples. Fuji apples? Yeah, who'd have thunk it, right? Absolutely. Best fish taco on the planet. <laughs> You heard it right from the man himself, Fuji Apples. You cannot miss this place. Best fish tacos on the planet. Jim, thank you so much for being here Thanks with for us. coming by. Yes. All right. We're here at Cayuca Cellars with Stuart Selkirk, winemaker, and we have an amazing opportunity to learn about the wine straight from the man himself. Tell us, what are you pouring today? Well, we're pouring a blend. It's called the Rustic One. Ayuka Cellars Wine, and it is uh, one of our current releases right now. And you guys are also part of the Pacific Coast Wine Trail, right? We are, and there are nine of us along the coast here now, and we banded together so we could promote ourselves and the wine industry along the coast in the cooler weather, especially for the summertime. It's rather nice when it's cooler and you can drink wine then. <laughs> it is. It's nice to drink wine on the coast and a lot of people don't know that that's even available. What yeah. is this particular blend? This blend is three-fifths Syrah, one-fifth Cabernet Sauvignon, and one-fifth Pinot Noir. Very unusual blend. Mm-hmm. Mm. Cheers. It is delicious. Thank yeah. you. And very unique and special, just like you and Cayuca Cellars. Well, <laughs> Thanks thank for you. having us. All right, thank you. I'm here at the Sea Shanty in Cayucas. So I've talked a lot about wine and food, but what about dessert? Voila, root beer float. Let me check it out. Oh my God, so amazing. Let me tell you what else, that's not it. I actually ordered the kitchen sink. Vanilla and chocolate ice cream, caramel, hot fudge, bananas, and topped with Heath Bar. You're not gonna believe this thing. Oh my gosh. Seriously, are you kidding me with this? Where do I start? All right, ready? Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Wow. Hi, Yukis. I'd call this the biggest little beach town in America. Known as one of the kite surfing capitals, if you've never seen it, you'll be blown away. Let there be wind. Not up for flying through the water at 30 miles per hour, not to worry. There are plenty of other beach activities. How about a lovely stroll on this gorgeous coastline? Let's talk tide pools. You want them, they've got them. Tide pools and more tide pools. You never know what you'll find. Never surfed? Now's your chance. Get out there and go for it. And don't forget to bring the dogs. Cayucas loves them. Family friendly. Dog friendly. Once you've visited this charming little town, you'll never want to leave. like a little boogie boarding at sunset on Cayucas Beach. It is the best. Come on. You can help keep Cayucas beautiful by participating in a beach cleanup. Plus, you'll get a cool tote bag for your efforts. Oh, now that's the way to 
to end the day. Whew. See you at the next one.